listened to someone I met her in the farm market at New Bow. I thought, okay, I can see you helping us create an artistic vision for our Art Place America grant, and that's exactly what she did. She spent like a week uh, working on developing concepts for us that I think really helped us get this $350,000 grant, the first one in Iowa. So we, we hope that there will be more to come. The state of Minnesota is way ahead of us getting one grant after another, so I would encourage all of you to network with each other, all the creative community people here, and uh, get your own application in. Okay. So why did we really need to apply for this grant? Um, the city is undergoing a lot of transition, and for years we've been working on redeveloping our main street, 7th Avenue, and our city planners know that once everything is torn up, and it looks like a war zone out there on 7th Avenue, our businesses are going to need every bit of help we can offer to keep people coming up to their front doors or entering through the back entrances, which is what our idea was. Uh, Dan Burton, who is the co-founder of Seattle's, well, actually a national organization called Walkable and Livable Communities, maybe you've heard him speak, but he was walking around Uptown Marion and said, you know, it would be really cool if you could activate these alleys and bring people in back here. This place has potential. And a lot of us that are used to seeing it aren't so sure, but hey, we're, we're figuring it out now. So our challenges are typical of alleys everywhere in the world, which is why I think they are looking to us to lead the way and see if we can figure it out. We convinced them we were creative. Uh, with our application and you know we're just hoping that we can overcome the obstacles like what you can see what it's like in the winter time we've got our own ice sculpture back there in the alley we've got i mean it's dangerous and we want to make it safe and inviting we've got dumpsters we've got cars parked there well not so much anymore because now it's only open to pedestrians but all the overhead cables looks like a rat's nest back there. Those are all being undergrounded thanks to our city council chipping in an extra $70,000. This shows um, the east entrance to our project site. Now, an artist that you may know, being more familiar with Cedar Rapids, is John Schwarzkopf. He's going to be creating a gateway feature here. This is between Memorial Hall and uh, a business that was Dreaming Bear, now open. We've got some entrepreneurs out there. We started off with visioning. Once we got that grant um, back in 2014, uh, we looked to our students, our, uh, especially our Iowa State design students and their professors, also local art teachers and their students from Marion and Lindmar. They put their heads together, and you can see here, I was so proud of them for the ideas they came up with to help our business owners make their back entrances more inviting. The lower image shows Dan Burden, and we had about 60 participants come to a workshop one day and walk the alleys, and they generated some awesome ideas that were compiled then by our artist selection panel. We use some low-tech and high-tech methods for soliciting community input. The paper plates with all the printed out strips of paper kind of helped organize thoughts by community members so we could begin to see common threads and the most popular ideas, which we then implemented when we made our art selection. Shy Pattery actually helped us with Mind Mixer when we brought them on board. As Art Place people would tell you, it's all about building on your assets. And in Marion, we've got so many exciting things going on now. I'm just giddy. I'm so proud of our community for what we've done to come together with a cohesive vision for our future. This only happened because the Marion Chamber did a visioning process called Imagine 8 and came up with eight great ideas for our community's future. Well, these are some of the results. Being named a great place in Iowa was one of them. Becoming a Main Street community came right after that. We're a cultural and entertainment district. We've been named in the top 10 places for families in the country. Great place to live. 
uh, Tree City USA year after year, one of Iowa's safest cities year after year. So we're feeling pretty good about all of that and being a Blue Zones community as well. Well, this shows you the impact of what the arts can do for um, improving the economic climate of your area or your place. This is going to be a game changer, I think, for Mary. This is one of our historic buildings called Memorial Hall. It's a Civil War era structure that had been languishing for decades. Jeannie and Paul Matthews bought it. You can see how it looked on the upper left. It was looking pretty god-awful. And then with some help from a Main Street Challenge Grant, they were able to redo the facade. And now it's serving as an Irish pub just opened in May. It's an awesome place. You can see a picture in the bottom there. This is the, what the back of that building looked like a couple of years ago when I took this photo. Yeah, I hope you notice the transformation and will come and visit. Um, the artwork that's envisioned for the space that I just showed you is an installation by a couple of artists from Indianapolis. They're one of the nine finalists that the artist selection panel chose out of 80 applicants using a process called CAFE, which is short for call for entry. Uh, that's how Kara applied as well, and all the artists that we encouraged to apply and found us from across the country. Anyway, these three pillars are going to be pretty cool. You can't tell by the photo, but they're illuminated by LED lights. And and the lights glow through colored plexiglass and they slowly change colors. And not only that, it's going to be um, incorporating a sound element. So the artists are coming to Eastern Iowa to record uh, bird songs and other sounds found in our community and then somehow mix it up to make a, an oral experience. When you're standing between the pillars, you can access the sounds using your smartphone in a QR code and you'll get the full sound around effect. Can't wait for that to be installed. And to go along with the bird songs that um, Luke and Quincy are doing, we've got a Miami artist that's featuring Iowa birds on a mural that's being painted on the stage wall that's right in the heart of our project site. The stage wall is being donated as an in-kind contribution by Ryan Companies. And we have other in-kind contributions and many donations from our community that we just simply couldn't do this project without. Other artists include uh, Dan Perry of Waterloo, who um, we asked him, since we could tell by his artwork that he was really good at creating machine-like parts and pieces and putting them together in an abstract fashion. And when we look back at Marion's history, um, you know, trains are really an important part of what got our city going. At one time, about half the male population in Marion worked for the railroad. So this is our nod to our history. We no longer have any trains or tracks, but we're going to have this awesome abstract sculpture uh, by Dan that's sort of reminiscent of our caboose as well as the steam rolling out of a, a locomotive. Uh, Jake Falcon from Kansas City is offering a nod to being a Tree City USA uh, city for um, one year after another. So we can't have real trees back there because people said they didn't want leaf litter. So we're going to have this awesome abstract tree that's 30 feet tall with a starboard first bloom of um, stainless steel at the top. Some of you probably know Dale Merrill and Liberty Ironworks of Mount Vernon. He is creating a gateway feature on 10th Street, which is Marion's busiest intersection. And this installation or series of sculptural pieces will be uh, located in a raised bed that's 55 feet long. Uh, the, the bed itself will provide a seating wall so people can gather and, and linger and make new friends. And the leaf-like forms at the top are actually uh, internally lit with LED lights and they'll glow through perforated steel. So it'll make it an inviting entrance at night. Oh, by the way, Dale is the fellow who did uh, the corn sculpture that some of you have probably heard about or seen in North Marion. It's um, on the roundabout on 35th Street. Yeah. Yeah, affectionately known as Corn Hands, but the real name is Yield. 
So here's where our artists are coming from all over the country. We're proud that we have uh, five artists from Iowa that competed very well with these national artists. And we have three more that are uh, waiting for contracts yet, so we can't wait to announce those. But we have some hoops to jump through first. Um, we've been tripped up a little bit with uh, SHPO, which maybe some of you know what that is, State Historic Preservation Office. We have to get permission to do our work on our historic buildings. Br brick and masonry walls, you know, no painting. So this shows our project site. It's one square block in Uptown Marion. It's our most historic area. And right in the center is where the two alleys crisscross. Um, Kara's uh, sculpture will be down here on 7th Avenue. So that will be easily visible from the park right across the street. We welcome you to come to Marion, uh, check us out. We've got so many partners already, but always have a need for more. So if you're interested in giving us some help, we especially don't know what we're going to do for event planning for next year. Once the alleys are activated, we want to give people reasons to keep coming back. So we need ideas for that. Also temporary art and promotions. So in anticipation of your question, that's what we could use some help with. So. We're here to help you. Um, I'm representing the city of Marion, but also our Main Street organization. I'm a board member for that and would uh, love to have um, some help for you if you're an entrepreneur thinking of locating out town